Okay guys, back again with uh, another video for you. This one is going to be a little more personal from my end, and I'm definitely going to piss some people off, I'm sure. Anyway, let's go. When I was 21, I was diagnosed with clinical depression. What got me to that diagnosis was a phone call to a counseling hotline. I was suicidal at the time and was considering eating a shotgun shell. I figured that if I was going to kill myself, I would do the job right the first time. I didn't want to somehow screw things up and end up a vegetable or some other state of being. I had to make a promise to the woman that I talked to on the phone that I wouldn't kill myself over the weekend since I couldn't see a shrink until the following Monday. I still find that one bizarre. I promise I won't kill myself until at least after the weekend and only after I have had a chance to talk to somebody face to face. Bizarre, but it worked because, hey, here I am. Anyway, I go to the shrink on the following Monday. She asks me a bunch of questions and has, has me fill out some forms and whatnot, and by the end of it all, she diagnosed me with clinical depression. I fit like seven out of the eight or nine criteria. Uh, she talks to me about my suicidal thoughts. I was pretty serious. I had a plan. I had the motive and the means. The only thing I hadn't done was decided on the day and the time that I was going to kill myself. I knew it was soon, maybe a week or two at the most. She then tells me that she doesn't think that, I, that she can help me. She believed that what I needed was a psychiatrist and she was only a psychologist. The difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist, for those that don't know, is that both of them can make a diagnosis and can talk about different treatments and ideas, but only a psychiatrist can prescribe medication. Psychologists cannot. This psychologist felt that in my current state that I needed to get on medication. I begged to differ. Even back then, I knew that medication, at least for me, wasn't the answer. And I told her this. I told her all the, all the medication would do is mask the symptoms, but wouldn't get down to the problems that I was having. Basically, I had negative thoughts about myself, and I had forgotten where the volume knob was, and I couldn't turn the radio off. That's how I described what was going on inside my head. All of the negative shit that I had created for myself... I forgot where the off switch was, and it was running as a loop in the background constantly, even in my sleep. That's part of why I wanted to kill myself, to just shut the noise up and have some peace and quiet. I made a deal with her that day. I wanted to try things my way first. That meant talking about what was going on, try some different things out, different ways of thinking, maybe, you know, write some things down, digging down, getting to the root, ideally. If we both didn't start seeing some results in after a couple of months or so, I would then take her advice and go see a psychiatrist and get on meds if necessary. She reluctantly agreed, and we got to work. I learned a lot about myself during those sessions. I learned at that time that I was a people pleaser and that I wanted everyone that I met to like me. Who doesn't? I had taken it to unhealthy levels, though. I was trying to control people through my behaviors to get them to like me. But in reality, I was ending up becoming what I thought those people needed and wanted me to be, and it wasn't who I was. I was my own puppet on a string. She said something to me one day that I'll never forget. Rob, do you want everyone to like you? Well, yeah, of course. Rob, do you like everyone you've met? I was floored and speechless because I knew the answer to that question. Of course I didn't like everyone I had met. In fact, there were some people at that time in my life that I downright hated. She then threw this little nugget at me. Rob, one-third of the world is going to love you no matter what. 
You'll never change that about them. One third of the world is going to be totally indifferent to you, no matter what. You'll never change that about them. And one third of the world is going to dislike you, no matter what. You'll never change that about them either. Focus on the ones that will love you. That was the day I found the off switch. Almost all of the negative talk stopped. I found the volume knob that day too and turned everything else way down. Okay, so we've strolled down memory lane. Big deal. Here's the big deal, guys. Depression is a choice. How you describe it <clears throat> is how it is. When you take something that is a feeling and you give it a description and call it something, you give it a name, you take it outside of yourself. You crystallize it and make it real. It becomes static and it becomes its own entity. And then there is not much or anything you can do about it. I have depression. I have anxiety. Think about those statements for a minute. I have depression. So now you have this thing that is outside of you. It has its own name and basically has its own life. It's a real thing. It's not a momentary sensation or a fleeting feeling anymore. It's there. It's always been there. It will always be there. All of the people that I know in my personal life that are on antidepressants are train wrecks. The medications aren't helping them, really. Those medications aren't fixing anything. That's because those medications are designed to deal with chemical imbalances in the brain. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. That's a story that Big Pharma created to sell you a solution you don't need to a problem you don't actually have. As I've grown and gotten older, I've realized that what I eat has far more impact on my moods and feelings. My weight and health is more of an impact than anything else on my life. How I choose to label and deal with my feelings and mental states has a huge impact on them as well. Do I still get down and feel sad, angry, hopeless, and anxious? Yeah, I do. The difference for me is that I know that these feelings are temporary and fleeting. They will pass. I can usually trace it back to something shitty that I ate or drank. I stopped labeling my momentary feelings as conditions. I don't have depression. I don't have anxiety. I may feel some negative things as we all do from time to time, but they aren't current states for me. Not anymore. They're not static. I get into arguments with some of my friends who are on meds for depression and anxiety. Man, do they argue for their conditions. They define their lives, their very existences from them. Guys, argue enough for your limitations and sure enough, they're yours. I'll say it again. Argue for your limitations and sure enough, they're yours. You give me examples and show me reasons why you have depression and anxiety. And sure enough, those things are yours. And you'll never get away from them. No meds, no treatments, no nothing will get you away from them. My question to you then is, do you really want to get away from them? Do you really want to overcome them? Or do you want to continue using them as a reason and as an excuse so that you don't have to do anything? Do you want to overcome or do you want to continue being a victim? Do you want to stay stuck? Watch what you say about the feelings and emotions that you go through. Be careful how you label them. Are those things outside of you and are they static and permanent? Do you have a condition? Or are they temporary and fleeting, something that comes and goes? And while you're at it, stop trying to be happy. Now, I didn't go and say, be miserable. I didn't say that. 
go be miserable. No. Stop trying to be happy. Stop trying to make happiness a static goal or end state. You'll end up miserable if you do. Happiness isn't an end state and it isn't static. Just like feeling sad, angry, jealous, down, whatever, happiness comes and goes too. Happiness is a byproduct of the things you do. Go out and get absorbed in something. Read a book, watch a movie, go to the gym. Go for a walk, build something, create something, work on a vehicle, whatever. You get so absorbed in what you're doing, you forgot to be happy. You can forget to be depressed. You'll feel good from doing something that, holy shit, I'm pretty damn happy right now, shows up. That's how it works. Watch how you label your thoughts and feelings. Become more aware of how and what you eat. Get your hormone levels checked out and do something about them if they are off. Get your weight under control. You'll find that your anxiety and your depression start to go away, if not go away completely. I can empathize with people that have depression and anxiety. I had it. I get it. I was diagnosed with it. I've been there. I've looked down the barrel of a gun a couple of times in my life. I won't pity them, though. I won't enable them. I won't perpetuate their victim status. That's on them. That's on you if this is where you're at. You have a choice. Depression is a choice. We'll talk to you next time, guys. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and that you uh, hit the like button and that you go ahead and share this with someone you think that could benefit from it. We'll talk to you later.